Hi, I'm Keith Raymond. This presentation is all about reducing the negative impact of harvesting operations on the environment. One of the major opportunities facing New Zealand forestry in the next 10 years to which R&D can contribute includes demonstrating sustainability in terms of soil conservation, water quality, peak flood control, and reducing debris flows. There's no doubt that images such as this from 2018 are seared into the memory of the community at large. Children today still ask, why are you putting logs on our beaches? As an industry, we're under attack for damage to neighboring property from debris flows. Since the dramatic events of Cyclone Gita in Tasman Bay in February 2018, and the high intensity localized storm in Tolaga Bay in June of 2018, the industry has been developing some responses in terms of near term management actions, focusing on addressing some of these issues. As we know, the buildup of slash, which is woody debris from wind thrown trees, broken tops and branches, and residues from harvesting operations on the cutover in steep forested areas adjacent to waterways creates the risk of blockage of those waterways and mobilization of debris downstream during high intensity rainstorms. From a harvesting perspective, we need to improve our harvest planning to increase the scale and time frame of our planning to extend the time period over which we harvest high risk catchments. Secondly, we need to continue to develop mechanized harvesting operations that reduce tree breakage. And thirdly, we need to develop new technologies to better extract harvesting residues. Doing nothing or the same old is not an option for the industry. On the subject of improved harvest planning on a catchment scale, FGR published a paper in the Journal of Forestry on steep land forest management lessons from 25 years ago, drawing on experience in developing a long-term catchment level harvest plan in the northern boundary of Kaingara Forest. In the area of felling practices, this presentation and the next one by Rob Preble focuses on harvesting operations to better clean slash out of streams and in preventing material getting into streams in the first place through reducing tree breakage during felling. As a result of a workshop on the management of erosion prone forests in August of 2018, FGR commenced a number of projects to find ways that the forest industry can improve its environmental management performance. One of the projects from the workshop in 2018 was to investigate alternative means of slash removal from sensitive areas, such as an improved grapple that can pick up slash branches and tops from incised gullies and waterways in steep terrain forests. Forest industry stakeholders supported the project to improve extraction of forest residues which was aimed at designing, building, and trialing a helicopter slash grapple. It's a collaborative project between FGR, Hallihawk Limited, Wire Wrapper Helicopters, and PF Olsen Group. And it's funded by the forest industry through the Forest Growers Levy Trust outside of the PGP program and forestry automation, co-funded by MPI. The slash grapple was designed by Hallihawk Limited of Taupo to have a maximum grapple opening of 1.45 meters and weigh as little as 76 kilos. It has the option of attaching a third tooth or tine between the two main tines on each side of the grapple. The build commenced in March of 2019 at Colchester Engineering Limited in Matamata. With the attached Enipac hydraulic unit, which you can see on the slide to the right, comprises the Kohler engine and a variable volume reservoir and hydraulic pump, and all up the unit weighs about 200 kilos. The slash grapple was designed to be matched to the lifting capacity of the squirrel helicopter, which is about 1,000 kilograms. After it was built, the first production field trial of the Hallihawk slash grapple was undertaken in Gisborne in May last year. The versatility of this helicopter allowed it to carry an effective payload of 750 to 800 kilos of slash per load 
and to be able to fly into deeply incised gullies and land on very small landing areas. The helicopter contractor undertaking this trial was Wairarapa Helicopters Limited based in Masterton and the, and the pilot was Tim Williams, a very experienced pilot. In terms of the results, under the best con conditions of fresh slash and no logs in the slash, the cycle times averaged just over one minute and the productivity averaged 18.5 tonnes of slash per hour. The cost of slash extraction averaged $135 per tonne of slash removed. When the cost of the helicopter operation was divided by the volume of wood that was extracted from the harvest block, the cost averaged $1.05 per tonne of wood produced. A lot was learned during the trial and how to pull the slash out of the stream most effectively. The key to productivity is not flying the slash too far for rapid turnaround. Pulling any large logs out first with a logging grapple before extracting the slash, then the average extraction productivity of the slash grapple was highest. And extracting fresh slash, which holds together much better than old, dry or rotten slash. So in conclusion, Using manual workers to remove harvest residues from steep or incised gullies can readily be recognised as a dangerous task. Sending machinery down into gullies close to waterways to remove harvest residues, while it's effective, often results in soil disturbance that destabilises the stream banks, increasing the risk of bank collapse and the sedimentation of waterways. The helicopter was able to extract slash which would be high cost and hazardous for manual slash extraction, which is the more traditional method of stream cleaning. The implementation of safe and efficient helicopter slash extraction substantially reduces or eliminates the unsafe nature of manual stream cleaning and minimizes the risk of negative environmental outcomes. Now the pilot has had more experience with slash extraction and the most productive conditions are known, which is flesh, fresh slash and large, fewer large buried logs, the productivity has greatly improved and the cost has been reduced significantly. The latest trial has been in a small farm forestry block in the Wairarapa, and we took the opportunity to shoot this video of the operation. The forest industry in New Zealand recognises that it needs to improve its environmental management performance. Woody debris or slash from forests on steep terrain can wash down waterways causing problems downstream. Removing the slash after harvest has traditionally been difficult, which is why Forest Growers Research is managing a project to develop better ways of extracting the residues that arise during harvesting steep forested terrain. The Slash Grapple, designed by Hallihawk Limited and built by Colchester Engineering Limited, was trialled in various steep terrain forests in the Wairarapa and Gisborne regions, using a skilled pilot from Wairarapa Helicopters Limited. Sarah and I have been farming here for 30 something years and uh, planted a lot of this forest uh, 20 something years ago. And we've been mindful of trying to harvest it as uh, tidily as we can, which is quite difficult. We were not too keen about the slash getting in the waterways and um, ending up causing issues further on downstream. And um, so, so having this grapple is going to hopefully remove a lot of that stuff that's going to cause problems. And P.F. Olsen's approached me about using our conventional grapple for moving the slash out of the stream, so um, what they told me they wanted to do, I said, well, our, our other logging grapple just wouldn't wouldn't meet the, meet the you know, do the job. So I rung Tim and says, gee, we've got to have a look. What, what are we going to do? We knew we had to make a grapple that would pick up the slash multi-time, but also to release it in flight, you know, to speed up our turnarounds. So that's why we're running a hydride inner pack so you can let it go in, in uh, mid-flight. 
Bonnie rang me up one day and said, um, we've got to get a grapple made, a slash grapple. And I said, yeah. I said, yeah, I'd, I'd be interested in that. And away we went. And uh, the, hence the reason we've, we're out here doing it today. And we're here on a block <coughs> on the wire up the coast. And, and it's, um, it's a good block to do the trial on. Um, it's a pretty difficult thing to fly because it moves in two places, or sorry, three places. But once you get a bit of a handle on it, it's, um, yeah, it works extremely well. It certainly does make a difference on what we've seen with our trials and everything. And um, yeah, uh, uh, we, we can target the places where they can't get with the diggers and things like that. So that's a, that's the sort of the channel we're heading down, isn't it, Tim? Yeah, we're just another tool in the toolbox for a forestry yeah. company. When it's a flat, it's fine, you know, but um, when you've got steep banks that lead into it, that's where <clears throat> that's where the machinery starts to well, not have get down there. Yeah, we can go in there, we just pull what we have to pull out, and we're gone. We've got a seven horsepower Kohler or engine with its hooked to our hydraulic pump, and we imported a VVR hydraulic unit from America, which is a pretty innovative idea that's allowed us to cut our oil capacity down to save weight. And um, this actually pressurizes, it runs under 10 PSI pressure, which is feeding our pump, so we get no cavitation or anything with this swinging around. And um, yeah, it was able, uh, enabled us to keep the weight right down. It's a new idea that they've made. That's the only one in New Zealand that I know of. And um, yeah, it's a pretty innovative idea. So, and it, so far it's been working really well. It's awesome.
helicopter slash grapple works well in difficult operating conditions, in areas that would be too difficult and dangerous to clear with either machines or manual labour. The grapple works best clearing slash which is fresh in the first few months after harvest. It is a new tool in the toolbox for forest owners to use for improved residue management and moving forward, it is definitely part of the solution for high risk environmental areas such as steep terrain waterways.